Locking you all in. Am I doing it? I'm reversing the polarity of the neutron flow. Hello, the amazing viewers and subscribers, and welcome to Paul Who, the channel all about Doctor Who, the channel where you hear all my thoughts, how I rank stuff about our favourite TV show, Doctor Who. So, yesterday it was the finale to basically season 40, and of course, I know it's the day after. I kind of want to get this video out of the way now because I absolutely want to do this now. So I'm going to be doing an up-to-date video ranking all of the Doctors from William Hartnell down to Shruti Gatwa. And of course for this, there will be two added extras, aka Joe Martin's Fugitive Doctor and of course John Hurt's War Doctor. I was going to include Richard D. Grant's Doctor, but I'm saving that for another video where I talk about the actors that have played the Doctor, but in different types of ways. So Shruti Gatwa is one of them. We have got some big finished actors for me to rank in that list as well. And of course with David Bradley and Richard Herndall for the first Doctor. So I've been basically focusing on the Doctors that have had seasons on the belt or have basic appearances. So like Joe Martin's Doctor appeared in the Whittaker era and John Hurt appeared in the Matt Smith era. So I kind of have to clue them into this video. So we've got 17 Doctors for us all fantastic to rank from worst to best. So... Of course, for this video, you're going to see different sonic screwdrivers. So when I finish talking about one doctor, I'm going to use a different sonic screwdriver to go to the next one. So are you sitting comfortably, ladies and gentlemen? Good. So let's get into it, shall we? So in 17th place, we jump into the 13th Doctors. Now, the 13th Doctor is played by Jodie Whittaker. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I'm not a Jodie hater. There's some episodes I did quite enjoy. There's some episodes I really do not enjoy. I mean... There's some episodes where I don't feel like she feels much like the Doctor to me. And there's episodes where she does do some good Doctor moments. Like specifically in The Woman Who Fell to Earth and The Power of the Doctor. Because those are two of the most episodes of her run where she does feel a bit like the Doctor. Where in other episodes it just feels a little bit different and a little bit, you know, blah. The 13th Doctor is at the bottom because she has got to be one of the least favourite Doctors for me. Now... It doesn't mean I hate Jodie Whittaker, but it just means I prefer other Doctors. Well, I prefer all the other Doctors above her. So, also for that, I have to say, I did quite enjoy some episodes with Jodie. Like The Woman Who Fell to Earth. I do love Kablam. I absolutely love Fish Dip After the Do. I love Association of the Summon, The Haunting of Philodote. I love mainly the Halloween Apocalypse. The Halloween Apocalypse. And, of course, War of the Santarans and Village of the Angels. And, of course... Legend of Sea Devils and The Power of the Doctor. They're the episodes I absolutely love for the 13th Doctor and I'd love to go back and revisit that once a, once in a blue moon. But there are so many stories in her era that I don't really go back and revisit. Like Revolution of the Daleks. I know some people love that one for me. I really wish we had more of the prison stuff going on instead of it literally be like that one scene with Captain Jack breaking around and basically going to save the, the universe from the Daleks, aka Earth. But... The 13th Doctor doesn't have many Doctor moments. And that's the thing about a Doctor. You've got to have those fantastic Doctor moments. And the 13th Doctor doesn't have that. And I'm sorry to say that. it it, it She doesn't. I honestly have to say I'm sorry, but she doesn't. So in 16th place, we have another Doctor from the Chignall era. It is the Fugitive Doctor, which is why I'm still holding 13 Sonic Screwdriver. Now, the Fugitive Doctor, I kind of want more. I just want more from from her. I don't know what it is. I absolutely love Joe Martin in the role of the Doctor. She does carry that Doctor aspect. She carries on that so much Doctorism. And I have to be honest with you. I absolutely flipping loved it. I honestly have to say I did love it. It's brilliant. It's amazing. I honestly have to say I absolutely love the Fugitive Doctor. I feel like the Fugitive the Fugitive Doctor is more like the proper Doctor than the 13th Doctor. And I'm sorry to anybody that loves Jodie Whittaker. Again, I don't hate her. It's just, she doesn't have that Doctor moments. And of course, the Fugitive Doctor has those iconic moments. Like, where she literally basically kicks the Dudu's asses and basically breaks the horn of the Dudu. And then of course, she does trick the Master by using in a holographic form. 
And she's so badass in Once Upon Future, where she's actually quite good. So, yeah, I do have to say, I absolutely love the Fugitive Doctor. And I kind of wish we have more from her. I really do wish we had more. And then, of course, jumping in number 15. And, of course, I haven't got this Doctor Science Screwdriver, so I have to use the Matt Smith one. It is the War Doctor, played by the uh, fantastic John Hurt. John Hurt feels more like the Doctor to me. Again, a bit like Joe Martin, I wanted more from them. I don't know what it is. I generally just want more from the future, from the War Doctor. I, of course, I've got two of these big finished box sets because John Hurt unfortunately has passed away. I still need to listen to the new actor doing the voice for the War Doctor, so I still need to listen to that. But I just kind of wanted more from the War Doctor. I kind of wish we had like a mini season or mini series of his Doctor. It's like fighting the Time War against the Daleks, seeing what that version of the Doctor got up to on screen. John Hurt is absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love the War Doctor and I do want to cosplay the War Doctor at some point. But I am sorry to say, I have to put him in 15th place. It's just because I wanted more from him. I really did. And then, of course, jumping in number 14. In 14th place, we have a classic Doctor. So I'm literally going to use a classic Sonic screwdriver for this one because I haven't got the his Sonic yet. It is the fifth Doctor, played by Peter Davison. Now, you're probably wondering why am I put Peter Davison this slow? So recently, I, ha I have rewatched seasons 19 and 20 on Blu-ray. And to be honest with you, the Fifth Doctor is becoming my least favourite classic Doctor. He doesn't have that Doctor moments for me. So a bit like the 13th Doctor, where the 13th Doctor doesn't have many Doctor moments. Peter Davison's Doctor doesn't have those Doctor moments. I mean, yeah, okay, he's actually quite good in Castro Falva. I love the scene where he's there with the Sonic Screwdriver raving it around the, the camera on Fort Doomsday. I love the visitation where he literally looks up because his Sonic Screwdriver got destroyed. I feel like he just killed an old friend. But he doesn't have many Doctor moments. The only time he feels much like the Doctor is in The Five Doctors. And, of course, in Resurrection, Planet of Fire, and The Case of Androsani. It's the four episodes out of his era. They, he actually does feel much like the Doctor. There's other episodes in his era where I don't mind his Doctor. Again, I wish he... Well, I kind of wish he wouldn't let Adric die. I wish he did something to save Adric, but I can't really worry about that. That wasn't Dan Speed Davison. That was the actual writer and the producer at the time. But yeah, the fifth Doctor is basically become my least favourite classic Doctor. His big finishes are good. I haven't listened to all of them. I mean, the Doctors I have mainly listened to in Big Finish is mainly the 4th, the 6th, and the 8th Doctors in Big Finish, which is why their Doctors are much higher. I need to listen to more Peter Davison stuff, but... Yeah, I'm sorry to say that Peter Davison is in literally in 14th place for me. And I'm sorry to say that. I really am. So, in 13th place, we have David Tennant, the 10th Doctor. So, yes, the 10th Doctor has really moved up since I last did a ranking video of all the Doctors. Now, I have revisited David Tennant's 10th Doctor in Series 2 and a little bit of Series 3. But thanks to the remastered. But I still love Series 4, 10th Doctor. The 10th Doctor is so good in Series 4. I don't know what it is. I, or should I say Season 30? I really love Season 30's version of the 10th Doctor. No romantic stuff going on. It feels much like the Doctor to me. And that's the thing. I mean, the one thing I have got an issue with the 10th Doctor is the fact he literally regenerates, fall, falls in love with Rose. I mean, that his first episode, he literally spends half an episode in bed. Half an episode in bed, not getting up and fighting the cigarettes and the pilot fish, apart from pointing the sort of screwdriver and then make them run away. He doesn't do much in this first episode. Then, of course, we have New Earth, which is, again, not a great episode. Teeth and Claw should have been his debut story, I think. I really feel Teeth and Claw should have been his debut story. But the Tenth Doctor has got some great, unique moments. I mean, I love that speech in Voyage Down, he goes, I'm the Doctor. I'm 903 years old. And a man's going to save your lives and all 6 billion people down the planet below. you got a problem with that. I really love that speech. And of course, I really love Waters of Mars. Waters of Mars is still my favourite Tenth Doctor episode. But the Tenth Doctor, he starts off very whiny. He starts off being this whole romantic side of the Doctor, which I never like. I never like when the Doctor does romantic stuff. I'm so glad when Paul McGann did it in the TV movie. In Big Finish... He never does that again. The Eighth Doctor never has the romantic side again in Big Finish from what I've listened to. 
But the Tenth Doctor, he just feels such like, oh my god, he just really does my head in with the whole falling in love with Rose, treating Martha like crap. I mean, the rest of Series 3, when you get from Human Nature, Family of Blood, Blink, and the Master Trilogy, absolutely brilliant in Season 29. Season 29 is good in the later half. Season 30 is when Tenant is at the best, and which is why I have to put him a bit higher, because I do love Season 30's Tenth Doctor, because it's just so different from his Season 28 and Season 29 counterparts, and I have to be honest with that. Again, the end of time, he is moping, like, oh, I'm going to die, you know, and all that. Yeah, I would love to see another classic Doctor try and do that mopey stuff, and again... It wouldn't work in Classic Who, and I don't think it works here in Modern Who, and I'm sorry to say that to anybody that thinks different. So yeah, I'm sorry to say that, but yeah, in basically 13th place, we have the 10th Doctor. In 12th place, so in 12th place, we are diving into Classic Who, and I'm using a different sort of screwdriver for holding this one. It is the first Doctor. I have grown a lot with the first Doctor. I absolutely starting to enjoy the first Doctor a lot more. Better than I did when I was growing up. Because when I was growing up, it's mainly Patrick Troughton for the 60s Doctor. I absolutely love. So the first Doctor has really grown on me lately. Uh, basically over the last year. I've really become more of a fan to the first Doctor. I don't know if that's too with the Target books. Where I've just read the Dykes Master Plan. And the first Doctor is an absolutely iconic character in that story. I absolutely love the first Doctor. So when we see him, he starts off with this darker alter ego where he kidnaps Ian and Barbara, about to bash somebody's head in with a rock. And then, boom, he mellows. He literally mellows by the end of season one. And then when you get to season two, he mellows. And of course, he does say goodbye to Susan. And I love that speech. One day, I should come back. Yes, I should come back. Until then, there must be no regrets, no tears, no anxieties. Just go forward with all your beliefs. And prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. I absolutely love that speech. And of course, I do love the Celestial Toymaker, the brand new animation. I absolutely love watching it in black and white. I need to watch the coloured version. And I really quite enjoy William Hartnell's voice in that story. Because it is quite good. And the way he literally manics the, the Toymaker's voice. Move to one, but to turn. Like that. I really love the way how the first Doctor just does that. He's very cunning. He's brilliant. And I quite enjoy the first Doctor for that. And I'm sorry to say that. I... I didn't want to put him so low, but I had to. I really had to put him so low because I just enjoy other Doctors over the first Doctor. And then, of course, in number 11th, we have a modern Doctor. It is the 14th Doctor, a.k.a. Mr. David Tennant. Now, the 14th Doctor would have been a bit higher if he had more episodes. I'm going by basically the four episodes we see him in. And I really do enjoy the 14th Doctor over... The 10th Doctor, but the fact literally the 14th Doctor is got the first Doctor in between him and the 10th. David Turner's performance as the 14th Doctor is phenomenal. Just phenomenal. I absolutely enjoy the 14th Doctor. Now, I read off the bit where he goes, don't, 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 don't listen, don't listen, don't listen. The, the, the cannons are enrapturing. I absolutely love the 14th Doctor in The Star Beast. I love him in Wild Blue Yonder, and I'm more lovely the giggle. Because I absolutely love the giggle. It is my favourite 14th Doctor episode. Again, the 14th Doctor feels so much different to the 10th Doctor. Well, the 10th Doctor was more like a romantic counterpart until he meets Donna and becomes friends. Where technically, technically the 14th Doctor is more of an older version of the 10th Doctor. And it's done so brilliantly. None of the romantic stuff going on. He has dealt with so much in his incarnations. I mean, you've got the whole thing with the flux and everything blowing up. You've got the whole timeless child still going on in the 14th Doctor, where he's literally there banging and he's there screaming because of the thingy, the thingy aliens, where he literally goes, my, my, hand, my hands are too long, my arms are too long, like that. I absolutely love the 14th Doctor. I would have liked to put him a bit higher, but I have to put other Doctors above the 14th Doctor. It's nothing to do with David Tennant, because I absolutely do enjoy the 14th Doctor more than the 10th Doctor. So yeah, I'm sorry to say that, but 14th Doctor is in 11th place. And so now we are driving into the te top 10 Doctors. In 10th place, we have another modern Doctor. It is the 9th Doctor, played by Christopher Eccleston. I have to put Christopher Eccleston over the 10th and 14th Doctors and, of course, the 13th Doctor because I absolutely do enjoy Christopher Eccleston. He is, honestly, my fourth favourite modern Doctor out of the modern Doctors. I love his season. I love season 27. 
I love every single one of these stories apart from the long game. The long game is the only episode where it's like a little bit of a dud. The rest of it, oh my god, I absolutely am loving Christopher Eccleston. I love his big finish audios. I've only got three box sets of his big finish audios, aka where we have the Ravenous, we have I've got only the monstrosity only the monstrosity box set. And then of course I've got Into the Stars. I just love Chris Eccleston's voice performance. It's so much good to have the Ninth Doctor back. And I really love season 27. Season 27 is brilliant. I just love every single one of the episodes. I mean, I don't know what it is, but Chris Eccleston gives us a great performance as the Ninth Doctor. I really love the fact that we have a Doctor wearing a battered leather jacket. He's wearing different colour jumpers, blue, black jeans and boots. This is the Doctor's most iconic look for the modern era because this is the Doctor that's fought for the Time War. He's so battle damaged. He meets a human girl named Rose. Yes, I really like the Doctor with Rose, the ninth Doctor with Rose, because it's not like a whole romantic sort of thing going on. It's basically just the Doctor being the Doctor. He's literally battled against the Time War. He's become more of a, doc a Doctor ego of himself and she helps him find the light and basically trying to get him back to the old ways he was before the Time War. I really love the Christopher Eccleston. He is honestly, honestly a good doctor. I absolutely do enjoy his doctor. I honestly do have to say I absolutely love his doctor. It's absolutely brilliant and amazing and fantastic. Just fantastic. Then, of course, now, in ninth place, we have another modern doctor in number nine. So, in ninth place, we have the 11th doctor, played by Matt Smith. Now, again, I really do like Matt Smith's Doctor. He is just so good. Just so flipping brilliant. I absolutely do enjoy Matt Smith's Doctor. He has got to be my third favourite modern Doctor. Again, Matt Smith, I really do enjoy. I, again, he feels so much like Patrick Troughton's Doctor. But, again, there's just stuff in his era that I kind of have to say I didn't enjoy his friendship with Amy and Rory. With the whole Amy, like, trying to kiss him in flesh and stone but i absolutely love the 11th doctor he is just another iconic incarnation of the doctor again i really love the fact this is an old man in an in a young man's body and matt smith really plays it down to the teeth i really like the dull darker side of the 11th doctor it really reminds me so much of the darker side the seventh doctor has in season 26 and a little bit of season 25 like when a good man goes to war today is not a good day to find out why i have so many I absolutely love that speech. I absolutely love the 11th Doctor. Honestly, I have to put him in ninth place because, again, as other Doctors, I have to say, I do quite enjoy it over. As you can tell, the only two classic Doctors I've mentioned so far is Peter Davison and William Hartnell. We've still got another five classic Doctors to talk about. So, yeah, I have to put Matt Smith's Doctor in, basically, in ninth place because, again... I like him so much more than the Ninth Doctor. The Eleventh Doctor is definitely the genuine article of the Doctor, but not quite for me. I'm sorry to say that. I really love the young man in the old man in the young man's body. Matt Smith really plays the Doctor really great. Down Series Five is his best. Series Seven B is his second best. Series Six and Series, or should I say, sorry, C Season Thirty One, and of course. Season 33B is his best, where we have season 32 and season 33A, not great. I don't like that kind of, basically, series six, season 32, or aka season 6, for those, or series 6, for those who don't know. I have to say, I don't like the whole mysterious post of the Doctor's death. It's been done quite a few times. I just don't really connect with it, and I don't know what it is, but I do like the first part of Series 6, or as I like to call it, Season 32. I mean, I love the silent two-parter. I absolutely love The Doctor's Wife. I love the Ganger episode and When a Good Man Goes to War. It's just the curse of the black spot and the rest of the season that I just don't visit, go back and revisit quite a lot. I haven't revisited it in over three years. That was the last time I've watched see, that season, Season 32. Where Season 33A... It's only got two good episodes that really stand out to me, which is A Sign of the Daleks and A Town Called Mercy. The rest of it is pretty much of a hit and miss. A really, really hit and miss. So, yeah, I do have to say I do enjoy The Love of Doctor, but I have to put other Doctors above him, and I'm sorry to say that. In eighth place. So, in eighth place, we have The Sixth Doctor, played by 
Colin Baker. So we've got another classic Doctor. I absolutely love Colin Baker's Doctor in Big Finish. He has grown so much since his, basically his final two seasons, aka season 22 and season 23. I really enjoy Colin Baker in the role of the Doctor. I love his booming voice. I don't like him in The Twin Dilemma. The Twin Dilemma is honestly the worst story for any Doctor. Any Doctor, any story from Classic Who, it is the worst. Apart from the actual villain, who's actually quite good in the story. I don't like the other Time Lord mind talk, something like that. But I really do enjoy The Sixth Doctor. Season 22 is my favourite season out of the Colin Baker era. But out of his big finish stuff, my God, from what I've listened to, a.k.a. his last adventure, real time with The Sixth Doctor coming across the Cybermen, we have Out of the Cybermen, which, it, again, it just gives us such a great performance from The Sixth Doctor. I absolutely love it. And that's thanks to Big Finish. Thanks to Big Finish. So in, where are we now? Seventh place. So in seventh place, we have a classic Doctor. It is the eighth Doctor. And of course, I have two of his like, screwdrivers. I've got his Dark Eye Sonic and his TV Movie Sonic. I absolutely love the eighth Doctor, which is why he's in seventh place. I absolutely love the eighth Doctor. Honestly, the TV movie is the only good thing about the TV movie. Apart from Eric Roberts' acting is a little bit campish, but he does get the master better in Big Finish. I absolutely love the eighth Doctor in Big Finish. I have only listened to Storm Warning and Sword of Orion for his first season. I've listened to a little bit of the Lucy Miller stuff. I love Dark Eyes. Dark Eyes is definitely my favourite audio season for the eighth Doctor. I absolutely love how the eighth Doctor has lost so much hope, he's gone darker into that darker aspect of the Doctor. I absolutely love it. I just generally love it. I love his, his sonic screwdriver as well. I love the fact we meet Molly or something. She calls it a penny whistle. You got a penny whistle? And he's there going, it's a screwdriver. I absolutely flipping love it. Excuse me, sorry. I just absolutely love it. The eighth Doctor is brilliant. Just brilliant. He's my favourite Doctor from Big Finish. And I really love what Big Finish have done with the Eighth Doctor. They've done so much with the character. And I I just want to thank him for it. I really want to have all these Big Finish anime, all these Big Finish audios animated. Because I just want some more Eighth Doctor on the shelf. I really want more Eighth Doctor stories on my shelf. I've actually considered putting Big Finish, the Big Finish audios in with the actual DVDs. And keep it all through like Donald, Doctor Orders so that we have... All the stuff with Paul McGann's Doctor with the TV movie. And, of course, adding the War Doctor into it. And then I have the Ninth Doctor. So, yeah, I do love Big Finish. And Big Finish has done some great stuff with the, every single version of the Doctor. But I love the Eighth Doctor and what he's done. In sixth place, in number six, we have another classic Doctor. And it is the third Doctor, ladies and gentlemen. Played by the amazing John Pertwee. Now, the third Doctor I have watched a lot of since January. I have rewatched all of his seasons, all five seasons. And that is, of course, season seven, season eight, season nine, season 10, and season 11. Season 10 is still my favourite Pertwee season. Honestly, it's still my favourite, favourite Pertwee season. I love the three Doctors, Carnival of Monsters, I in front of space. I absolutely do enjoy that story. Planet of the Daleks, I have actually grown to enjoy it a lot more than I have done. Again, I just absolutely love it. I just absolutely love that story. And The Green Death, it is such a great finale to a season. We say goodbye to Joe Grant. I really love Season 7 as well. Season 7 is, of course, my second favourite Pertwee season. I love the stuff with Pertwee and Roger Degado. They are so my favourite. They are literally my favourite duo for the Doctor and the Master. They just bounce off each other. The chemistry between the two of them is done so well. I don't know what it is. Season 8 is definitely my third favourite season for John Pertwee. I just love every single one of the stories with him and the Master, played by Roger DeGardo. I don't know what it is. I, and yes, yes, I absolutely am starting to enjoy Connery in Space a lot more. Now, Connery in Space, I never used to quite enjoy it because I used to find the first three episodes a little bit boring, but I have rewatched it on Blu ray. Basically, after I just did a whole Pertwee marathon, and I absolutely love revisiting John Pertwee's Doctor. I reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. Reverse the polarity. I absolutely flipping love the third Doctor. He is the Doctor. 
I don't care what people say. He is generally the article of the Doctor. But I've got to put him in sixth place because I do enjoy other Doctors above John Pertwee. But I do love the third Doctor. I love the fact this is a Doctor who is in exile. He's experimenting more on Earth. He's driving a car. He travels. He's the very first incarnation of the Doctor that travels to a parallel universe. And it is so much better than Rise of Summit and Age of Steel and Amigos and Doomsday. Inferno is just a much better parallel story than whatever the 10th Doctor had. I'm sorry to say that. But I absolutely love Inferno. It's the best, best parallel universe story that Doctor Who has ever done. I really love the werewolf creatures. I really love season nine. Season nine, it is my least favourite Pertwee season. But it's still got some iconic moments in there. Like Day of the Daleks, the Curse of Pydon, the Sea Devils and the Time Monster. The only story I don't like for Pertwee is, of course, the mutants. But I am trying to get it on Target Book and see if my opinion changes on it. See if I do enjoy it on Target Book. So yeah, number six, we have the third Doctor. Now into the top five, ladies and gentlemen. The top five Doctors. And of course, we've got two modern Doctors. And we've got three classic Doctors in this list to go. So let's get into it, shall we? In number five, we have the current Doctor, played by Shuti Gatwa. Shuti Gatwa has made it into the top five after nine episodes over eight stories. I absolutely am loving the 15th Doctor. I want more from the 15th Doctor. It's killing me that we've got six months of no Doctor Who until Christmas Day for the next Shooty Gatwa episode. I want him now. I want more of the 15th Doctor. I absolutely loving the 15th Doctor. He reminds me so much of the 11th Doctor and the 2nd Doctor. I absolutely love Shooty Gatwa for that. He really has the chemistry with... Millie Gibson, a.k.a. Ruby Sunday. I really love the chemistry between the two of them, the way they're back and forth. I absolutely flipping love every single one of these episodes. The only one that I do not like is, of course, Space Babies. <sighs> I know. I have. I will do my over my overhaul thoughts over season 14. But I absolutely flipping love Shoot Gap with Doctor. He is one of the highlights of the season. Now, the one thing that bugs me about the 15th Doctor is that... In almost everything that I built, one of his episodes, he does cry. The Doctor does cry a lot. He cries, I think, in Space Babies. He cries in the Church on Ruby Road. Again, this is a Doctor who does show his emotions. And it's so different after the 13th Doctor was very much closed off of her emotions. So that she didn't see that her companions, what was going on. I absolutely love the 15th Doctor. My favourite episode of the 15th Doctor so far has got to go. To a story I didn't think I would actually quite enjoy. But every time I've rewatched it, it became my favourite episode. And that, of course, is Rogue. I just love Rogue. Again, the romantic stuff doesn't need to be in that story. But I think it's in the story to try and make it work. And it's just good. It's honestly flipping amazing. I do love Shooting Girl. I love the, I love the thing where my favourite song of Kai Minogue is I Can't Get You Out of My Head. I don't know what it is. I just love that song. And it plays it in the episode. And I love the bit with all the Doctors flying around. I love the fact we hear Sutek groan in the TARDIS. But I really love the fantastic episode known as The Devil's Call. That is my second favourite episode of the season. I mean, Rogue has really moved up a lot for me. It's so much better than Dot and Bobble. It is so much better than 73 Yards. I mean, I've got to do my thoughts on it. But at the moment, Rogue's in the league. I don't know where... The Legend of Ruby Sunday and Empire of Death it lands. I've got to do a video on that. That will be coming out on Wednesday when I've had a good think about it. I need three days to sort my head out and think about it because I'm literally... Oh, that was a good finale. It's not the best finale, but it was a good finale. I did quite enjoy it. So yeah, the 15th Doctor, I absolutely enjoy Shooty Get Well. I really love him in the role. He does capture two iconic Doctors in his performance. He reminds me so much of the 11th and so much of the 2nd Doctor, which is why I just have to put them both into it. I absolutely love them. In 4th place. So in 4th place, we have another modern Doctor. We have... We have the 12th Doctor. I absolutely love the 12th Doctor. Peter Capaldi is honestly my favourite modern Doctor. Now, this is why. He feels... So much like the classic Doctors. It feels a mixture between the third and the fourth Doctors in all of his stories. And of course, it feels a bit like the sixth Doctor in his first season, a.k.a. in season 34. I really like how he is a bit darker. It reminds me so much of the sixth and first Doctors rolling into one in that one. Then he becomes a little bit like the fourth and eleventh Doctors in... The, in season 35 and then in season 36 it feels so much like a mixture between 
John Pertwee's Doctor and Tom Baker's Doctor. I absolutely flipping love Peter Capaldi. He is so good in the role. I love all of his stories. I know people out there don't like Capaldi, they don't like his era. That's your opinion, but my opinion is I absolutely love him. And to be honest with you, Peter Capaldi is the most iconic modern Doctor to me. I don't know what it is. Shooty Gatwa is definitely leading up that way, but I kind of want to see Shooty Gatwa in more seasons. So I'm looking forward to season 42. Well, season 41. And hopefully season 42. So yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that. I really am looking forward to that the most. But Capaldi is just so good in the role. I just love Capaldi. He is honestly great in the role. And I really warmed to the C Capaldi's Doctor a hell of a lot more than I did from Matt Smith's Doctor and David Tennant's Doctor. Because they're the ones I watched quite a lot of growing up where... When I've watched se season 34 and I was like watching it back in 2014... I just instantly enjoyed and clicked straight with the 12th Doctor. Honestly, it's just brilliant. Honestly, absolutely amazing and brilliant. And I absolutely love it. In third place, we have the second Doctor, played by Patrick Troughton. Now, I am a big Troughton fan. Troughton is honestly my favourite second... Uh, he's honestly my favourite 60s Doctor. Out of the 60s two Doctors, Patrick Troughton is definitely my favourite. He is in third place. There's two other Doctors I have to put above the second Doctor for me. I just love the second Doctor. He is so different to William Hartnell. Where William Hartnell's Doctor started off really grumpy and stuff. The second Doctor always acts like a fool. And that is the trick, he's villains. He always acts like a fool. The way he manipulates some stuff in his adventures. Where in Tomb of the Sermon, where he literally says, Yes, Jamie, we've got to stay. We've got to stay. Ever since that word was mentioned. What word, Doctor? Cybermen. I really love Tomb of the Summon. I love the invasion. The invasion, it is definitely my favourite Patrick Trouton story. Where he's there going, oh, 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 like that when he's there jumping when they're shooting. I really love Unit. That's me. I really love the ha the fact we see Unit in his era for the first time. I really love Season 6. Season 6 is definitely my favourite season for, per uh, for Trouton. I absolutely love Power of the Daleks. Power of the Daleks is honestly one of the best post regeneration stories I have ever seen. One of the best. Because Trout literally has a moment where he's literally his head spinning, he's trying to work out who he is, and this is the first regeneration, and it works. It's not like some other stories where it just doesn't work, and that's basically like the Christmas Invasion. I absolutely love Troughton's Doctor. Brilliant. Just brilliant, and absolutely fantastic, and amazing, and I just genuinely love it. In. Second place, we have my second favourite Doctor, and it is Sylvester McCoy, the Seventh Doctor. The Seventh Doctor, he is just iconic. I absolutely love the Seventh Doctor. Now, season 24, people don't enjoy, but I'm going to be honest with you. I quite enjoy season 24. The story that is definitely the weak character part of that season is, of course, Delta and the Bowman. But I love Tam and Arani. Tam and Arani, if you understand the circumstances and that they were struggling behind the production of the story... Then I forgive it for that. I really love Paddle's Towers. I really love Dragonfire. Them two are the most iconic stories from season 24. Season 25, on the other hand, it is my second favourite season of Doctor Who of all time. My second favourite season. I absolutely flipping love Remembrance of Dimes. I love The Happiness Patrol, Silver Nemesis and The Greatest Show in the Galaxy. Now, Silver Nemesis, it's not considered to have the best reputation in the fandom, but I absolutely quite enjoy it. I intend to enjoy episodes. Not many people do. But I've got to be honest with you, I absolutely flipping enjoyed it. I honestly did enjoy The Seventh Doctor. I love season 26. Season 26, it is my favourite season of basically Sylvester McCoy. And season 26 has actually took over season 13 for me. And that's just because I love season 26. I've watched it a lot over last year. Over last year, I've watched all four of its stories, all 14 episodes on Blu-ray last year. And I enjoyed it. And it has really knocked season 13 out. Where season 13 is still my favourite Tom Baker season. But season 26. It is my favourite Sylvester McCoy season. Uh, which, if you ask me the other day. What's my favourite season. It would probably be season 13. Or it's probably season 26. It, it does change. Because I absolutely love those two seasons. I have a lot. Them two are the best seasons. Out of Doctor Who for me. But I really love Battlefield. Battlefield is a good story. I love how the Doctor manipulates offence. He becomes more of the chess master doctor that we see in The Curse of Fenric. And he's just brilliant. Just absolutely brilliant. So yeah, in second place, we have the seventh doctor. In number f in first place, we have the most iconic doctor. And this has been my favourite ever since I was a little kid. Ever since 
I watched Doctor Who for the first time in 1999. Tom Baker has always been my favourite Doctor, and I absolutely love the fourth Doctor, where he's got that numinous voice, you know. Would you like a jelly baby? I say, what one of a butler, so violent. I absolutely flipping love the fourth Doctor. I don't know what it is about the fourth Doctor. He is the most iconic Doctor to me. I really love every single one of his stories. Yes, he does have a few bad episodes in his era, but I don't care because it's Tom Baker. <laughs> Tom Baker is honestly a good actor. He is the Doctor to me. I absolutely love the fourth Doctor. I don't know what it is. Every single one of his stories. I love him in Robot. I love the Ark in Space. I love the Santon Experiment. Genesis of the Daleks, Revenge of the Cybermen. That is just his first season. Season 13, I absolutely love Pyramids of Mars. That is my favourite story of the season, followed by The Brain of Morbius, followed by The Seeds of Death, and then, of course, Terror of the Zygons, Planet of Evil, and then we have The Android Invasion. Season 14, it is a little bit of a mixed bag because I don't know where Season 14 sits sometimes because it is in 5th place or it's in 6th place. It does swap between season 17 because season 17 does swap with season 17 is my sixth favorite colin tom baker story sorry it is in sixth place at the moment but sometimes it does swap places with season 14 it depends what kind of mood if i'm one in the middle of rewatching it then it does move up if i'm rewatching season 14 i do quite enjoy that one as well season 15 i absolutely love season 16 i love season 17 i love season 16 i never used to be it did used to be my least favorite tom baker season but that's just because I don't like the whole story arc of the key to time, but it does have some standout episodes in there, like the Pirate Planet, the Stones of Blood, the and the the Armageddon Factor, and basically the Reboss Operation I'm starting to enjoy a lot more. And we have the Andrews of Tara. And forbid me to say this, because I'm honest, I do think Pro 1701 is definitely going to try and shoot me for this. I absolutely am starting to love Power of Crawl. I am absolutely starting to love Power of Crow. I don't know what it is about the story. Yeah, okay, I don't like the green people. Where they're doing that stupid dance going, Crow! Crow! But I am absolutely quite enjoying Power of Crow at the moment. Season 17, I love. Season 18. Oh my god, season 18. It's neck and neck with season 13. Now... You can understand why is that. It's because season 18 is so different from the 70 seasons. It's the first 80 season. I absolutely love Tom's outfit. Tom Baker's outfit with the whole burgundy coat, the burgundy jeans, the boots. I absolutely love his season 13 counterpart, season 18. I don't know how it stands. I think it's my second favourite Tom Baker season. I do need to do a video of me ranking all of the Doctor's seasons from worst to best in my favourite Doctors, so do my Hartnell, then Troughton, then Pertwee, then Baker, then Davison, McCoy, McGann, uh, you know, blah, 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 all that. But yeah, so yeah, that is basically ranking all of the Doctors. So, give you a bit of a recap. In, 30, in 17th place, we have the 13th Doctor. In 16th place, we have the Fugitive Doctor. In 15th place, we have the War Doctor. In 14th place, we have the 5th Doctor. In 13th place, we have the 10th Doctor. In 12th place, we have the 1st Doctor. In 11th place, we have the 14th Doctor. In 10th place, we have the 9th Doctor. In 9th place, we have the 11th Doctor. In 8th place, we have the 6th Doctor. In 7th place, we have the 8th Doctor. In 6th place, we have the 3rd Doctor. Then, of course, in 5th place, we have the 15th Doctor, the current Doctor. Then, of course, in 4th place, we have the 12th Doctor. In third place, we have the second Doctor. And then, of course, we have the... In second place, we have the seventh Doctor. And, of course, in number one place, we have the fourth Doctor. So that is how I rank all of the Doctors from worst to best, from Jodie Whittaker down to Tom Baker. Now, let me know in the comments, how would you rank all of the Doctors? What stories do you enjoy from each of these Doctors' era? Now, at the moment, Rogue is honestly my favourite Shooty Gatwa episode, but that's just at the moment. I need to rethink and basically and see how I re-rank it. Now, when I actually did my ranking video, I gave it a six out of ten, and it's become a, and I gave it a B. And now after I've I've rewatched it quite a lot of times. It's definitely become an A plus, and it's definitely become a ten out of ten for me because I just have some moments I do quite enjoy from it, like the Kylie Minogue song and. The bit with all the doctors' faces showing. So yeah, I do quite enjoy that. So 
Join me for more awesome Doctor Who content. Thank you for watching this video. Please do like, subscribe, share, and I'm sorry it is a, such a long video. So thank you for watching and have a cracking day, you amazing viewers and subscribers.